Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, I've got that old pistol video for you here today, and um, we've been trying to cover more of these smaller guns, um, pocket guns, if you will. And today we're going to talk about a firearm that was actually my very first pocket pistol, which is the Beretta 3032 Tomcat, which you see here. This is chambered in 32 ACP. So I've had these... I'm, I believe my first one I bought right when they were first released, which was 1996. And I have a few others I've collected over the years. And that time, it's proven to me to be, you know, useful very much at times as a pocket gun. Is it a good choice for you? Does it have the features that you need in a concealed carry weapon? Well, we're going to find that out in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, or if you've been watching our videos and just have not had a chance to do so, if you like our content, please consider subscribing. Um, you can do that by simply locating that little subscribe button there in the lower right-hand portion of your computer screen. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can scroll down below the video and hit subscribe that way. And uh, it helps us out a lot, and we really, really appreciate it. So, Beretta Tomcat. When this pistol first came out, I didn't have a great deal of pistols in my collection at that time, and most of my pistols were larger. So when I saw the Tomcat, uh, the appeal was obvious because, you know, having a small gun, something that you can hide easily, um, really seemed like a great idea to me. Um, so very quickly, we always like to get into to give you a little bit of sense of scale on these firearms. Now, it's hard to appreciate even with my larger hand, the size of this little gun, until you compare it to some other guns that we consider small. For example, uh, Glock 43 is a pretty popular choice for people, but even smaller than the 43 is the Glock 42, which I have right here. Now, of course, the 42 is a 380, so they're different calibers, but once again, we're looking at size and scale. When I put the 42 next to the Tomcat, look how the 42 just dwarfs this little Tomcat. Now, I'm showing you this because there's a lot of guns that people carry that are in subcompact category, maybe even in a compact category, that they almost say are pocket guns, but they're not quite to me. I couldn't really carry one that way. But the 42 is a gun that I have pocket carried before quite comfortably. And so you can imagine if you can carry something like this in a pocket holster or even by itself, personally, as a striker fire gun, I would definitely have this in a holster in the pocket. But if you're going to carry something like this, you could certainly carry something like this. Another uh, really popular choice, for example, I have my uh, SIG 938 here. Once again, if you set this pistol down, of course, this is a 9mm versus a 32. If you set this down next to the Tomcat, you can see how, once again, it just dwarfs the Tomcat as far as size and scale. And this, once again, is a gun that is extremely easy to carry in the pocket. It's very, very light. So, looking at those, you can already see that the Tomcat is an extremely small offering they would easily go inside the, of the pocket or could easily go into a small uh, in the waistband holster. All right, we're going to get into the features on this little gun here. Now, before I get into all the different types of features, uh, I'm going to point out a couple of things just because if you've done any research on this gun at all, you've probably seen different versions that are available now. And that's because um, Beretta recently has made more offerings. For this firearm you've got the uh, the covert version which has a a, a wood grip and um, you have a threaded barrel you have the inox which is very similar to this it's just you have a, a stainless metal finish with your dark grip and then you have the um, the FDE which of course is going to be the flat dark earth and that model also has a threaded barrel so you've got some different versions of this that you can get and I've actually got multiples of this original black and this is actually one of the earlier ones and you can tell this by the safety lever 
you can see it's kind of a this flattened area here and it's kind of a bulky piece the new one um, has got more of a lever look to it rather than this big chunky piece right in here so they've made a few little changes over the years but let's make sure this thing is clear when we do that of course your magazine release button is right down there and you can see that's how I got our seven round magazine free and then another feature I need to show you in order to show you that it's safe and there's other ways of doing it but this lever here in the front if you push it forward the barrel actually tips up so as you can see you can look right through the barrel and see that it's clear and of course we have no magazine this is a very interesting feature of the firearm and it's actually a big selling point of the firearm because if you imagine yourself in a situation where let's just say that you're an individual that has problems with hand strength or whatever condition it's a little tougher for you to rack a slide on a firearm well on this little tomcat i can tell you it takes a little bit of doing you know it's not horrible but it takes a little bit of hand strength to rack this little gun but just imagine instead you could take the firearm load your magazine manually insert that round and then just close the barrel you now have a weapon that is not cocked but it is ready to fire once you pull that hammer back or you pull the trigger because this is a double action single action configuration now this makes the weapon very safe in my opinion because you have a pretty good trigger pull I mean it is not something that's going to accidentally happen in your pocket and that goes the same with pulling the hammer it takes a lot of effort to pull this thing back and a lot of effort to pull through with this trigger so I don't see this being an unsafe pocket option even if it was just in the pocket by itself now I have several other methods um, to safely carry it and we'll cover that in the uh, carry section but let me get to the rest of the features for you here so you can see the sights you know your front sight is just part of the you know, you know metal there it's just cut right into it and then you can see that your rear sight it can be pressed in and out but it's a very basic notch and post setup. Now, I've had people ask me about that type of setup on a gun like this, and to be quite honest with you, yeah, it's not the most ideal situation, but this is a very short range firearm. And when it comes to defensive firearms, that's, I would think that would be the mentality anyway. We'll cover more about that in the range section, but, um, the sights are not that important on a firearm like this as far as I'm concerned because this is going to be extremely close up use anyway. And of course you have your your plastic grips here. You've got the Beretta logo built in like see on the new ones. You've got a uh, option between the wood grip and then you've got the grips in either the FDE or the dark. And it's got a good size trigger guard, which I do like quite a bit, because if I'm going to carry a gun of any kind, large or small, I don't like having to work to get my finger in there quickly. And this is a big trigger guard, so it's really easy. And um, also, depending on how you hold your gun, this trigger guard could be useful in helping you stabilize the weapon. We'll talk about that when we get to the range section. But uh, once again seven rounds of 32 ACP double action single action notch and post sight and um, you know once again there's your safety lever so it's a pretty straightforward layout pretty interesting little gun and not bad so when we talk about the range I always have a little bit of fun with this because People get these small guns, and sometimes they have unrealistic expectations about performance. And don't get me wrong, this is a great gun, and I've carried this gun a lot, and I mean a lot. 
and I still do from time to time. But the ammunition, I've tried every kind of ammo known to mankind that you can get through this gun, which isn't a whole lot. And um, the results are about the same. But let me show you what I did use. Um, American Eagle here, this is the 32 um, Auto 71 Grain FMJ. This is pretty good range ammo. And I also used a round that you should be familiar with, Hydroshocks. These are the 65 grain um, Hydroshocks from Federal. And no matter which round that I use in this firearm, um, I get similar results on the paper, which is, I've mentioned before that I shoot defensively at around 21 feet, 7 yards. That's where I practice. But I take longer shots, of course, to see how accurate the weapon is and how good I can shoot it. So moving it a little bit further out, um, getting just beyond that range. When I'm shooting it closer to, oh, let's say 10 yards, you can actually see in the target where the bullets are tumbling and making these large um, tears. Apparently what's happening is, you know, when it fires, the projectile is unstable uh, pretty quickly, apparently after it's shot. And instead of getting, you know, holes in the target at that range, I'm getting, you know, odd shaped tears, these slits. So up close, you have a pretty normal looking target. And as you move out, not very far, you start getting these, you know, scar tear these oblong looking holes um, where it's obviously starting to move and not going through um, with a lot of precision having said that um, accuracy of course at that range is not very good either now when I say not very good if I take this firearm and I shoot a magazine through it at seven yards you know if you can if you can keep it within a three or four inch group, you're doing pretty good um, because it's just not that easy of a gun to shoot with precision. But once again, it's not supposed to be. You know, we're talking about an extremely small firearm. And the other thing you're going to find is uh, stabilizing your grip for the shot because there's some concerns you need to be aware of. Now, whether it's the original design or whether it's the new one, um, they still have the same hazards in common as far as how this thing is designed. And I'm going to show you a couple things here. I'm going to take this magazine back out, tip the barrel, let you see that we are still clear. But if you look at the slide, this thing, I don't know if you can see that, but see how sharp that is against my hand, those points on the back of the slide. Okay, I'm showing you that for a reason, because if you try and take this firearm and you've got a big hand and you've got a lot of meat on your hand that sticks up and you go to fire that gun, if you look and see where that slide is, you want to talk about getting railroaded. I have ex experienced this myself more than once and um, I learned very quickly that in order to avoid that hazard right there, you got to make sure that you're holding the gun in a manner that's going to keep you safe. So for me, what that ended up being was when I hold the firearm, I put a lot of effort on keeping this thumb really hard on top of the other one so that the meat of my hand stays where it's supposed to be behind and below that mark. I've seen other people use a teacup uh, grip on these and hold it like this, which I suppose you can do that as well. It keeps it clear. But basically what I'm saying to you is if you're going to use this firearm, you need to be very aware of that sharp um, end on the slide there because once that happens to you, you'll never forget it. Now, aside from making sure you're shooting it safe, and aside from the fact that it's not terribly um, accurate, it's extremely reliable. I was actually surprised at how many times I have shot this little gun and having absolutely no memory of it ever jamming or having any kind of problems. So as far as its performance, 
I've been very pleased with it, and as far as a small gun, I think I probably trust this little firearm to be a pocket gun more really than any other firearm that I own. And it's just because it's proven that over so many years. So, good range performance, good features. So when we talk about carrying this gun as a concealed carry weapon, of course, we mentioned it's a pocket gun. So, of course, in my opinion, and there are people who will scream about this, and that's okay. Um, some people say, well, there's no way you should carry any gun in your pocket without a holster. It's not the ideal situation. I will agree with you there. But as hard as this trigger is to pull, and as hard as this is to cock back manually, I, I don't see this being a problem. Of course, you have a manual safety, so if you want to keep it safetyed, and not cocked in your pocket, it's one of the safest configurations you could possibly have. Now, alternatively, if I'm carrying this in the pocket, typically I'm either gonna have this in a sticky or I've even got a little tiny Uncle Mike's, which is, you know, a little kind of felt holster with a little clip on it. That one fits really well in the pocket. But I also ended up carrying this in the waistband um, quite a bit too. And, um, you know, Tagwa and several other people have got these little small holsters like this that are meant for in the waistband. And this one I really like. It's a really good fit. And um, it's lightweight. If you go to their website, uh, these guys make all kinds of holsters. I mean, they've been making them for a long time. There's all kinds of variety. So this is just one example. But a little holster like this, um, you've got hardly anything on the waistband. And the one part of the gun that's really uncomfortable, of course, is covered with that leather there. So it's a nice, easy way to carry the firearm. But this thing is so light and so small that whether you have it in the waistband or whether you have it in your pocket, um, it's one of those rare opportunities where you truly don't realize that you've got the firearm because it just doesn't have a whole lot of weight to it. You know, fully loaded, it, it doesn't feel any different than having a wallet in my pocket. Um, but once again, I've carried this firearm off and on, um, I guess, for 25 years now. And even though it's 32 and it does have limitations, um, it's still one of my most trusted firearms. So extremely easy and comfortable to carry. So overall impressions of the uh, Tomcat 3032 by Beretta. Well, every once in a while, you'll find a firearm, and we'll talk about it, and we'll take note of how long it's been around. And generally, when a firearm has been around for a long time without a lot of major changes, to me, that's an indication that they got something right. And the Tomcat, once again, was my very first pocket gun that I ever purchased. And I purchased an earlier model, and... I've got a couple of the newer ones as well, and I just feel like it is a very reliable, very simple solution, and it eliminates a lot of question marks for safety. You know, once again, if you're a person that has difficulty with hand strength and you want to be able to safely manage a firearm, the ability to take your magazine, put it in the firearm, drop a round into the barrel and close it, and then the gun is ready, but it is also safe. And if you want to use the manual safety, you can. It's just a really good solution for someone that wants to keep things simple. Being able to check at any time that your gun is clear, I just think it's a really simple but effective solution for um, extreme, you know, your deep cover, small firearm situation. So I would definitely recommend this to anyone. And like I said, you've got several options now that um, are being made that have a little more style, if you will. So if you want the flat dark earth with a threaded barrel, or if you want the wood grips, that type of thing, or the stainless, all that's available. So they're nice little pistols. I can't see any reason why they still wouldn't be a good option today. Okay. Well, that's going to do it for today. And once again, thank you so much for watching. We'll be back very soon with another video for you. So until then, as always, everyone stay safe 
and have a great day. Thank you.